Good morning, everyone. My name is Luke McMillan. I'm the physical exercise specialist at Engage Town, New Brunswick. And today, I'm going to talk to you about IT band syndrome, which is commonly referred to as runner's knee. IT band syndrome is mainly, yet not exclusively, an overuse injury. The IT band is a thick piece of fascia that runs all the way from your hip to the lateral part of your knee. It encloses the TFL and also has connections to your glute, the lateral quads, and the lateral hamstrings. Although IT band syndrome is not always caused by overdoing it in the running department, this is a common occurrence. If you are looking for a progressive running regimen that limits your risk of injury, our team has just made one up called the Couch to 5K program. You can check out our Facebook page for more details. I'm going to try to keep things short today and just go over three things. The number one being where you may be experiencing pain if you have IT band syndrome. Number two, what physiologically is going on outside of the overuse that may be a cause of your IT band syndrome. And number three, we're going to go over some corrective exercises that you can start today and employ in your active recovery to help resolve the issue. Pain location. IT band syndrome is fairly easy for physiotherapists and reconditioning specialists to recognize because it has a well-defined pain location on the outside portion or on the lateral portion of the knee. Now this pain can take place right at the lateral epicondyle or just above the lateral epicondyle. Okay, so this differs from other knee conditions where you may experience pain on the anterior portion or on the front of the knee, or you may experience pain just beneath the kneecap. IT band syndrome, you will experience pain on the outside or on the lateral portion of your knee. Now this pain may start out as dull and achy, and it may progress to a sharp, again, well-defined pain location. Okay, you may also experience a snapping or a popping sensation. So just a little bit of physiology before we move into those corrective exercises. So what physiologically is actually happening to make you experience your IT band syndrome? Well, originally it was thought that that popping or that snapping sensation was the IT band sliding or shifting forward and backward over the prominent portion of your femur. We now know through recent research that the IT band is actually firmly attached to the femur and there's not a significant amount of sliding action going on. Now, the pain you may be experiencing is likely more caused by a compression issue where a thick layer of fat with a lot of nerves in it is being compressed against the femur. What do you do today? What do you do moving forward in regards to your programming and your corrective exercises? Well, one, you're going to want to take some capacity of rest due to the fact that IT band syndrome is mainly an overuse injury. Two, let's get your programming reviewed by a professional to ensure that it's progressive in nature and there's limited risk of injury. Three, Weak glutes and an overused TFL have been correlated to IT band syndrome. The first thing that I can do is some foam rolling. Now I don't want to roll directly on that highly compressed area, but my lateral quads, my lateral hamstrings, and my lateral glutes can all contribute to an overtight IT band. Okay, performing some myofascial release on these areas can help resolve my issue. Now I want to roll nice and slow, and when I find an area that is problematic or painful, I want to rest on that area for 10 to 15 seconds. The next exercise is a side laying abduction or side laying leg raise. Now first I want to make sure my spine is as neutral as possible. I'm braced. This leg has a slight bend in it like this and the other leg is straight. Now from here I just want to raise and hold. I can hold for approximately 3 seconds. What I don't want to see is any backward rotation like this or any forward rotation like this or any compensation through the spine. You can also perform a side lang or a side plank clamshell with a lot of the same cues if you have a resistance band at home. So the first thing I'm going to do is prop up into a brace position and from here I'm going to lift like that, hold for about three seconds and then back down. Hold for about three seconds and back down. Another exercise you can perform is a double leg glute bridge. So I'm down like this. Feet are just over hip width apart. Shoulder blades are back. And I'm raising up, firing the glutes, 
holding for approximately 10 to 15 seconds, and then back down. Now, if you've tried those exercises, you foam rolled, and you have your hinge pattern down, and you're looking for an exercise more related to performance to help work on firing that glute, then you can try a single leg Romanian deadlift. Now, this exercise is loaded. I'm using a dumbbell here today. You can use a kettlebell or whatever you have at home. I'm standing on the opposite leg with a slight bend in this leg here. The other leg is straight in the back and my spine is nice and neutral. Again, this movement is coming from the hips because it is a hip hinge dominant pattern. I hope this video allowed you to learn something about IT band syndrome and gave you some knowledge that you can apply to possibly mitigate your issue. Now I'm going to be doing a little bit of a knee series for the next couple of weeks, but comment on what you want to see next. Until next time, stay safe and thanks for watching. Welcome everybody, my name is Luke McMillan. I'm the physical exercise specialist for Base Gage Town, and today we're diving into part two of a three-part series all about the knee. We're still talking about runner's knee, but this video will be all about patella femoral syndrome. Patella femoral syndrome doesn't give us a whole lot of information in regards to the root cause of the issue. It does tell us that you're experiencing pain on the front or on the anterior side of your knee. Now there may be a whole bunch of reasons as to why you may be experiencing this pain. It could be repetitive jumping, repetitive landing, it could be an overuse issue in terms of you running or cycling too much, or you could just sit too much. Now we do know that it's the most commonly diagnosed type of knee pain and it more commonly affects women than men. We will once again be keeping things short today and just go over two things, one being potential causes of patellofemoral syndrome two being stretches and exercises, and what you can do about it. Potential causes of patellar femoral syndrome. Now, as I stated earlier, there are a ton of reasons as to why you may be experiencing pain, but I'm just going to go over some common issues today. We're gonna to start in the bottom corner right here, okay? So we've got our patella. The patella is the kneecap, same thing. And our kneecap sits in a groove. And this groove is called the trochlear groove. And ideally, the patella is able to move in that trochlear groove fluently without obstruction. And it's nice and balanced. So you can see this one's got a check mark because that patella is nice and balanced in that groove there and moves nicely without obstruction. And that's what you're seeing up here. This is the thigh. This is the kneecap or the patella. And it's a balanced patella and would move and track nicely in that trochlear groove. Now. If we were to have a muscular imbalance, which is what we see at number one here, oftentimes, and not all of the time, the lateral quadricep is tight. This lateral quadricep is the vastus lateralis, okay? So if that is over tight, that will pull on the patella or the kneecap laterally and superiorly, and you'll get almost displacement of the patella, and that would lead to mistracking of the kneecap, okay? So, vastus lateralis is over tight, pulls on that kneecap, it's no longer centered and balanced, and now you have mistracking, okay? So you can see the patella, and it's not sitting nicely in that trochlear groove anymore. So that's a common issue right here. Number two is something that we call valgus knees, and this is caused by potentially weak glutes or weak glute need. And when you have that increased Q line, they call it, you'll have an increased risk for subluxation of the patella or an increased risk of partial dislocation of the patella. And the patella, again, will be misplaced and will ultimately mistrack in that trochlear groove. Okay, so if you have one of these cases or if you have mistracking at all, then this can cause damage on the underside of the patella here. And we call that chondromalacia. Okay, so that's basically wear and tear or deteriorating and softening of the cartilage underneath the patella that will give you pain. Other potential causes of patellar femoral syndrome include number one, poor biomechanical control or lack of proper technique. Number two, foot abnormality. So you may have lack of dorsiflexion or you may have flat feet and overpronation. 
Number three, overuse or underuse. Okay, so the first thing we can do to help out with this issue is a basic quad stretch, just like this. Use the wall for balance and then pull your foot up with the opposite hand there. You can also pull your foot a little bit medially, okay, towards the center line of your body to ensure that you're getting that vastus lateralis or the lateral quadricep if that is, in fact, your issue. The next thing we can do is foam roll. Okay, so we can take our foam roller and we can roll right on the anterior part of our thigh so that we're hitting those quadriceps, okay? And a lot of people, again, have issues with, with an overtight lateral portion of their quadricep. So you can lean a little bit to the side like this. And again, just slow rolls. And we're landing on those points of discomfort and sitting there. We can also do something called a monster walk. So you can use a resistance band for this exercise here. Resistance band goes through both legs like this. And the band can sit just above your knees here like this. All right, we're picking a nice balanced stance and we're laterally stepping just like this. And this is gonna fire up our external rotators of our hips and really help counteract the issue of valgus knees if that is potentially our issue. Just like that. The last thing we can do is try a reverse lunge. And this is really going to help with the coordination of ensuring that our knee is not collapsing and biomechanically we are sound and moving properly and as we would like so that we do not experience pain. Let's wrap up this knee series, guys. Today is all about patellar tendonitis, otherwise known as jumper's knee. You can also get this from running as well. My name is Luke McMillan. I'm the physical exercise specialist for Base Gauge Town, and let's get into it. Let's dive right into some background information, and then after this, we'll go over where you're experiencing pain and what you can do about it with some corrective exercises. Now, the patellar and the femoral tendon do a great job at generating and absorbing a whole bunch of power. And they need to with athletes performing sprinting and jumping repetitively on a day in, day out basis. Okay, the patellar tendon can actually generate up to 15,000 newtons of force, which is up to 19 times their own body weight. The femoral tendon, even more because it's thicker. Now, patellar tendonitis is mainly an overuse injury. However, more specifically, our body does a great job at adapting to training stimulus. In this case, you have provided your body with too much of a training stimulus. In other words, you have exceeded your load tolerance over a certain amount of time and your tendon has not been able to appropriately adapt to your training. And these tendons like to become stiffer and stronger over time and you have not given that time to your tendon to do so. Okay, so this can ultimately lead to irritation, inflammation, or even possibly degradation of that tendon down the road. Now let's go over where you may be experiencing pain. Normally, people will experience pain on the anterior portion or on the front side of the knee. Now this pain can come after a basketball game or a volleyball game, or it can come after an exercise session where you're performing something repetitively or explosively. Now this pain more specifically is usually found where the tendon meets the patella or the kneecap above the kneecap or where the tendon meets the tibia below the kneecap. Okay, so let's dive right into some corrective exercises and what you can do about it. Three exercises that you can employ in your training today to help with your patella tendonitis. Now do not take two to three weeks off your training. Remember, you have a low tolerance issue. Yes, you have exceeded your low tolerance over a certain amount of time, but if you take two to three weeks off right now, you're going to continually run into the same issue. We instead want to appropriately adapt the tendon so that it can become stiffer and stronger and you can perform better ultimately down the road. One great exercise to help with appropriately adapting that tendon would be a box squat here. See, I don't have a box, but I've got a little side table and we can go into a three second eccentric phase and then a three second concentric phase, just like that. And we're not shifting our body weight backwards on the box either. Just a nice controlled pace 
that will help adapt and load the tendon appropriately and uh, remove that connection between the eccentric and the concentric phase. The next exercise we have here is a raised heel 60 degree pistol squat. And now this exercise in particular has been shown in research to help with patellar tendonitis at a two sets of 15 reps a couple times per day, okay? So all I'm going to be doing is raising this leg here and we're going into a 60 degree pistol squat and then right back up. Again, two sets of 15 reps a couple times per day to appropriately load that patellar and femoral tendon. The next exercise is actually going to be loaded and it's called a Bulgarian split squat. Okay, so we're getting in our Bulgarian split squat position and we're just going down like this, nice controlled pace. Again, I would suggest a three second eccentric and a three second concentric phase. And the research has actually shown us that we need to use about 70% of our one rep max to appropriately load and adapt our tendons. So loading these exercises will be very important to increase your load tolerance. So after you didn't experience pain on the box squat, no pain on the pistol squat, let's load a Bulgarian split squat at a nice controlled pace and maybe even add some weight to that box squat as well. Before jumping into plyos, don't go right into a squat jump. Let's work on the landing phase and accepting load first before working on the concentric of that plyo. I hope all that information makes sense. You guys can reach out to your exercise professionals locally to get some help with these particular exercises and I'll see you in the next video.